Hello and welcome to yet another episode of six things that you didn't know, six features that you didn't know about KDE Plasma. And this time, six features that you didn't actually know, because if you know all six, then I formally give you the right to dislike this video and whatever. Let's get started. This is number one. Dolphin hidden places, let's say. So basically when you see files, Dolphin is seeing them thanks to a thing called Key.io Slaves, which basically, you know, give Dolphin all the info about the files. And to see that, you just go into the Dolphin address bar and then you type files and so on. But files is not the only Key.io slave at all, there are many. As an example, a bit of time ago, you could simply type settings and that would bring up settings within Dolphin, actually. Unlikely that doesn't work anymore, but we still get a few cool ones. As an example, if you want to see all of your applications, you can just type applications or programs and that will do the trick. But this is pretty cool. You actually can browse through Dolphin the main page of any comment just by using men as you would with uh, HTTPS. Of course, Dolphin cannot display text files. It should work out of the box in Conqueror, by the way, but it will still prompt you to open up the documentation. You can also see all the fonts that you have installed without even opening system settings just by typing fonts and that's it, seriously. And if you want to see the documentation of any KDE application, you can just type help as you would with HTTPS and then the name of the application like Dolphin. And that also opens up the help center immediately. What else? You can access uh, zipped files or tar files using zip or tar. You can have a timeline of all the files you've recently changed through timeline and you can see all of your activities by tapping activities. If you have installed BAP, which is an application to do backups, you can also type BAP. I don't know what that does, but you can. And you can also go with Baloo search and that will allow you to search and that's pretty normal. However, you can edit what you're searching to get many more options compared to what's even exposed in the UI for Dolphin for normal search. So. That is also pretty cool. And all of this within Dolphin, just by typing some words in the address bar. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Next up, you probably know about KRunner, but do you know about runners or do you know about all of them? So when you see something, when you search for anything in KRunner, it's thanks to a runner. You type something that something is asked to each runner and each single runner can say, yes, I do have something that matches. I don't have something that matches. As an example, you have a runner for applications, a runner for files, and so on. And although Kerunner is probably very well known, some runners within Kerunner are, are very well hidden. So if you ever need some documentation about a certain runner, you can actually just type question mark and then the name of the runner. You can also just, you know, click the question mark. That doesn't actually show you all the runners, just some of them. So keep that in mind. The first runner you might not know is mobile applications. So if you search right now for mobile applications and see, just try to guess what's gonna happen. It's not what you think, it's completely different. So you will see a list of all the widgets that support being run within a window. And you can just select one and it will open up as if it was an application, except it's actually a KD Plasma widget, the same one that you would put in your desktop or in your panel, but floating as a window. Pretty cool. What else? So you probably know that KD Plasma does support scripting. You can create some scripts and you can install them from the internet. However, did you know that if you type desktop console in KRunner, that will actually bring up a desktop console when you can just type any JavaScript code that uses the KWIN or Plasma APIs to do like anything. As an example, you do have a web page with many examples and the last one tells you how to change things within your panel just with a bit of a javascript code and you don't need to know how to install 
scripts or anything, you just open up the console, copy paste and run and it just works out of the box. <laughs> Isn't that impressive? And then of course you probably know about this, but you can also use YT to search YouTube and WP to search Wikipedia. Actually, you can customize what uh, runners to use for search and there's a variety of them. There's like SoundCloud, Vimeo, KD Bugzilla, GitLab, anything. Okay, so did you know about all of this? If so, don't worry, you won't know about this one, which is I, I, custom gestures. Let's say custom gestures, but it's not that, it's more than that. So let's start off with uh, mouse gestures. You probably know about like touch screen gestures and touch pad gestures. Forget about that. Mouse gestures, those that you can do with this little thing. So basically how it works is that you use the middle button and then you just create a shape. And for each shape that you can draw with your middle button, you can assign a function that is anything, literally anything, something within a window by sending some keystrokes or a Cubase command, anything. As an example, I set it up so that if you just press the middle button and then go up, it will open up overview, which is extremely useful if you use a mouse very often, actually. Now, you don't have any mouse gesture out of the box, you need to create them. You can just set whatever you want. And you also have to enable the diamond that checks for these events in the settings. But yeah, w once you turn it on, it's a pretty cool feature in it. But uh, that's not everything. There's also application events, and this is the coolest part. So you can actually automatize in system settings, your desktop, such that whenever an event happens with some window, something else happens. And that event could be anything from, as an example, a window is opened or a window gains focus. And the thing that you do in response to that event is again, anything, shortcuts, cubus commands, opening up overview. If you want an example of why this is so powerful, a stupid example, but still, you could make it so that whenever you focus or like click on a console, the background becomes like a dark style background. And whenever you open up a web browser instead, the background becomes a, a light wallpaper to make an example or a more useful one, I guess. If you open up Dolphin, automatically also open up an instance of console. So you have always these two if you use them a lot. These kind of things, it's all within system settings. Did you know that? You didn't, you didn't. Well, if you did, I will get you with this one. Desktop effects. Okay, so you probably know about desktop effects, but do you know about all of them? Some are pretty cool. As an example, you have invert, which is disabled by default. You have to turn it on. But when you do, you get shortcuts to invert your entire screen or just a window, which is particularly useful, actually. Let's say that I'm browsing a PDF document in a viewer like Firefox, as an example, that currently does not support dark theme for any PDF. I can just use that shortcut to invert the colors and voila, I have a dark theme PDF and that, that was easy. Or if you're doing anything artistic, then often enough it's useful to invert the colors to see if you're doing everything correctly from a color point of view. I do actually that very often. You do also have draw marks, which I think could be particularly useful for tutorials like this one, I guess, that allows you to just, you know, write on the screen with your mouse. You have to press meta and control, but of course you have meta, meta shift, meta control, I don't remember. But of course you do also have to enable this one in system settings because it's all off by default for some reason. And then you can just, you know, write on the screen. And finally, we get to the coolest one, which is thumbnails aside. Did you know about thumbnails aside? Don't lie. So what this does is that, again, you have to turn it on because it's off by default. But then if you press a shortcut, which I think by default is meta shift T or meta control T, it will take a window and create a thumbnail of the window on the bottom right. You can customize the opacity of the window, the size and the distance between the thumbnails. And it's pretty useful if you have, as an example, a video that's going on and you just thumb, 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 
thumbnail thumbnail it on the bottom right and start doing something else and you can still see it it's basically picture in picture but it works for any window literally any window this is so useful why, why is it why is nobody talking about this why is this off by default part five window management <laughs> so you probably know about this but let's still say it if you middle click the maximize button of a window it will maximize but just vertically and if you right click it will maximize but just horizontally so you know now you know that you can also get either by right clicking the title bar or customizing the title bar so that it's always there a shade button which what it does is just the whole window disappears but the title bar is still there which is basically minimize but different personally i love it but i never minimize anyway so shade cool stuff by the way you can also add a menu bar to the title bar you can do that out of the box as a button and you will get all of your you know menu bar stuff inside of it but you can also do through a third party title bar this is the only one which is not fully plasma first party you can do a fully integrated local menu uh, just like you know unity it's very easy to install i think you have to compile a couple of packages and that's it you do get the menu just in the title bar for this feature actually there was a merge request to bring this to breeze as an option but unluckily it was never finished last last thing about part five is window rules so again you probably know about window rules but did you know that it's incredibly easy to make one you just right click any window and then you just select more options create special thingy for this window and that's it you can just select any property which will always be applied to that window as an example you can change its title you can change the color scheme of the title bar but you can also change the opacity of the window to make it transparent by the way the transparency actually makes the whole thing transparent also text and you know things that you don't want to be transparent so it, you shouldn't overdo that however there is part six which is getting a transparent blurry look without installing any third party theme so usually you say okay i want something blurry and transparent okay i have to install something no you haven't however it only works in kurigami applications and it's hacky it's terribly hacky but so if you go to the color scheme well you can change the colors but there is one thing that the color scheme editor doesn't actually expose to the user for a good reason and that is transparency you can actually change the transparency of any part of the window by changing the color scheme even though it's not exposed in the ui nothing stops you to do that from the color file file which is at this directory and you can just you know edit with kate you've got all the colors you go to the color that you want which is probably the the background color and you make it completely transparent and then when you open up any kurigami application it will be completely transparent qt widgets applications are completely black but eh, sorry if you do want also blur behind these windows then you can get that by using the kwin scripts blur my window i think it's called you just install the script it does blur behind windows it's pretty simple finally if you want even more transparency you can also make context menus transparent this is actually a feature that's supported out of the box you go into the application style you select breeze you go into the settings you select transparency and then you change the slider this is such a nice feature but it's well hidden into a sub 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 page and that is everything from me what else should i say Honestly, if you come into my comments and say, okay, I knew about all of this, I'm, I'm not gonna believe you. I actually spent hours doing research for each of these things and so many of these things I didn't know myself. I actually discovered whilst doing this video and I'm a developer for KDE, so. Okay, so before the video finishes, I really wanted to say a big, big thank you to all the sponsors and Patreons, actually just, you know, Patreons of my channel because it's the only thing that actually allows me to go on and do these videos and buy new lights as an example as you might have noticed and you know the 
My monthly goal is 700 euros and this month has been super successful. I am way beyond that. So thanks everybody. If you want to join in, I've got Patreon, LibraPay, Paypal, Ko-Fi, literally anything that you can think of and any donation actually helps out this channel and my personal involvement with Kitty. So thanks everybody and see you in a couple of days, maybe more than that with a new video. By the way, it's not a green screen, it's real. It's all real. It took me hours to set up.